this DC's name is David. David Kinney. David is someone that makes really, really bad decisions. Welcome to Dumb Criminal. Now let's get into this backstory. On the 10th of May, 2017, at around 10 a.m., actually, I don't know how, when it was, but it was in the morning sometime, David and his wife, Cherie, and their kid turned up at Brad's house to drop back a garden utensil. David sent his kid in to go get Brad to tell him that they were outside. So the little kid goes inside and finds the result of their dad's really bad decisions. Kid runs out yelling and screaming, Uncle Brad's dead, Uncle Brad's dead. He's got two GSWs in the back of his head. Parents ring the cops, and that's where we pick it up right about now. Story one, suicide. I can't not f***ing believe that. How long you got this Eight, nine years. Really? Oh, yeah. My kids call him uncle. He's supposed to go to the Bahamas with us in August. Your best buds, yeah. yeah, he's one of my best friends. He met him at coal mining classes <laughs> years ago, and we just took him and his family. I'm trying not to freak out. I'm That's sorry. Right. I, I can't not just see that. I'm not supposed to see that, man. I'm sorry. Where'd you go? Where'd you get him? How you come about coming out here? <laughs> that right there is a weed eater in the whole plant. Okay. You are bring him the weed eater? Yes, sir. We come to the basement door and knock. Because my daughter knocked on the front door. I told her, I said, Sis, go knock on the back door. She went up and knocked on the back door. Door was I went up right behind her. I noticed that the kitchen was scattered. There was stuff all over. But I told my wife, I said, she he's the last relationship he was in they, it was pulled off and he hasn't been with anybody ever since who was the well, girl no it was, it it was, was the, guy. the guy um he, oh he uh, was in with the guy yes sir yeah. okay who was the guy he, uh, uh scott Scotty. something Scotty. oh man I think just the regular relationship, Bricker and Yeah, yeah. He told us about him a couple times. As you can see, this DC's a bloody crybaby, which makes the sound of his bullshit twice as annoying so old david crybaby dc is trying to play it off to the cops that brad was depressed and he shot himself and now your mind will flicker back to something you learned before wasn't it two gunshot wounds yes 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 it was and by thinking that thought my dc subbies you now know you're not a dc so cheers for subbing so Let's get back to it. So David Crybaby DC has turned up at the cop shop and is about to put his J for genius idea into play. And as a DC subby, you have a front row seat. So where we start here? Where were you that Sunday afternoon? Uh-huh. I told my wife, I said, okay, well, you know, we'll run this weed heater down here. My daughter went with us because she hasn't got to see the puppies yet. So she was all excited about seeing the puppies. Get your phone on you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Take the cruise. David Kelly. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I told you at the house there, not to delete that stuff. Yes, sir. I, I have it all right here. Okay. This is the guy that's going to take care of all that for you. Okay. okay. So this is just standard paperwork here. Here, but since it's your phone, it's your personal property, we got to get your consent. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, give me a couple minutes and I'll buzz right through this. Yes, sir. I'll get back to you as quick as you can, okay? Oh, it's another one of those really bad decisions. Yep, old DC Crybaby is under the belief that they won't find anything on the phone because he's deleted everything. All I can say is the name of this channel, baby. <laughs> How close were you and Brad? Very close. Did you say you were his best friend? Yes, sir. Yeah, real close. What's your kids calling? Brad? Now, here at the channel, we're not saying that men cannot cry. Well, God knows most of us are pussies. You see, the DC crybaby uses crying as a defense mechanism because people won't challenge him when he's crying. So the tech boys finish up stripping the phone and they come across a couple of files that they thought, oh, oh, I wonder why he didn't tell us that. Well, that's because, officer, it's a secret, a secret that this DC would kill for. And right about now, this detective is about to find out that secret. Yeah. Am I interrupted? No. The difficulty for this cop is, how do I phrase this question? Oh my. David, you should, you should stuff on your phone. It's a little, a little 
questionable. Yes, sir. What, uh, how close were you and Brad? Very close. How close were you guys? Very, very close. Devon, very best friend. Did you guys have sex together? There's a few times in the past where... This is not one of our thought experiments, but if you want to, that's fine with us as well. You know, he's attempted a lot. We've kind of... So now DC's just alerted them to possible motive. As it becomes a very strong motive if his wife doesn't know. Oh my doesn't know. Your wife doesn't know? No, sir. And even after all of what's happened, he still wants to keep it from his wife. My wife. Now it's the cell towers that wreck up DC's story. Yeah. Am I interrupting? No. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. It's now that DC Crybaby has a really big problem. David? Yes, sir. That's a problem, bud. What's that? Where's your phone putting you at Brad's house the time we get killed? It's past three. And it is this question, or what we call the origin question, because it is this point that the cop knows that DC is lying, and that DCs realize that they're the DCs. If you've watched our Coleman video, uh, Whoa, did you kill her? Was she alive? Um, when, when you left the house this morning, was your wife alive? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right now, right now, genius, genius here, genius here is shitting his pants right now. The origin question, and this is also the point of where DCs have to think on their feet, so to speak, and come up with a story or stories which get them off the hook. And we use this terminology, line and hook due to the tactics used by this detective. This type of detective is called a fisherman. I was not yes, there when Brad was killed. You were at his house. Yes, sir. I'm the murderer. You were oh, there. Oh, God. You know exactly when he was killed. Yes, sir, I know. You were there when he was killed. No, sir, I was not at his house when that man was murdered, That's sir. It. I can't... This is the kind of shit gets people in trouble. Oh my god, I know! You see, DC crybabies, what these clowns do is that they try to hide behind a shield. They put their hands over their faces and think that gives them comfort. David. The cop knows this. David? Look at me. You're still starting to look... Yes, yeah, sir, I know. It's starting to look pretty messed up. Listen, you yeah, can grab him, now the cop will shut down DC from doing it without alerting DC that he's onto him. He's a pretty smart cop. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys really think? Seriously? You are going to lose everything. You lose your wife, you lose your kids. You look at me. This don't have to be the end of your life. You got a chance to come clean and tell me what really oh, happened. Look, look at me. Look at me. We're past the earth. Because me and you were close now. You understand me calling me tonight. Then I'll call you David. And I'm going to tell you. The case says you did it. Tell you guys what happened. I didn't shoot. You didn't know. I'm going to tell you. Story number two. The other guy. Then who did? Tell me what happened. Who what happened? It's okay. We'll do this together. Tell me what happened. He sure will. He had another guy with him. This is how smart DC is, thinking on the spot. I don't know who he was, I don't know his name. Okay. I'm swearing on everything that's so holy right Tell now. Me. What happened next? They went in the garage. It's okay. David, <laughs> look, at look at Look at me in the eye, but you can tell me what happened next. I was so scared. What happened? <laughs> You heard 
the gun shot. The guy came running out of the garage. Okay. And he got the Brad's BMW. Okay. And then I left. Oh. Okay. <laughs> A slight problem with DC's story number two. You see, Brad's car was packed. Second problem is, Brad's car was still at Brad's house. And the third problem for this DC story is, neighbors' doorbell cameras, which show only one car leaving Brad's yeah. after Brad's death. And apparently the driver was crying. There's a couple things you need to know. Brad's front seat and the Beamer was full of stuff that he brought from the wedding. Yes, sir. He didn't have a passenger. Sir, that guy went back into the BMW. So story two is not looking too good. Your story's bullshit. Exactly. You look at me right now. This guy, he's the last guy that's going to let you have a chance to tell him the truth, no matter how outlandish it is. We're working out together. This You tell me what happened there. Tell me what happened. He didn't have anybody with him. Sir, I'm telling you. We're going to prove that that's a lie. Do you understand that? We will prove that that's a lie. Yes, if you Damn it, this guy wasn't there. So how did he get shot? Tell me what happened. Story number three. We got to the house. Me and Brad were, I'm telling you, we got on the streets of the line. Okay. There was another man there. I, I swear to you, God, to you, I do not know his name. I do not know his name. Okay. We did kind of have a little bit of an argument about me being there. Right. He shot Brad in front of you? Yes, sir. Okay. And he was going to shoot me. All right. But I got scared. I didn't know what to do. Oh, God, here come the tears. And then I left. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm also scared. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even the cops thinking, is this crybaby for real? He knew. He knew what I looked like. He, he I, my vehicle was there. What I did not know what to do. What kind of gun was it? I have no clue. One of the reasons, and it's only just one of the reasons, why DCs are so dumb, is what we call shallow thinking. That is, when they come up with a story that they're making up, they are not able to articulate it, meaning that they don't think of the repercussions of any consequences of any points that can be brought against them due to what they say. Instead, what they'll do is just reply with an answer that they think will get them off the hook for that moment in time. And DCs like this DC crybaby do that, and the reason is, is just because they are so fucking dumb. You were right there watching him shoot Brad. Yes, sir. You know. Why this if you called the cops about your friend getting shot? Why did you call the cops? Why did you do this elaborate story? Why did you put, you put your own daughter in that basement with that body? And it's this action, the action of sending his own daughter in so she would find Brad dead on the floor with the two GSWs and not giving a shit about how much that would affect a child truly makes this DC crybaby a disgusting narcissist. You did that. Yes, sir. And you knew he was down there. So, damn it, put screw in your family. Sir, you know, I am. Tell me what happened. I did not kill him. You knew Brad was dead? Did he your I daughter? did not know he was dead! If he didn't think he was a DC before, he certainly does now. I mean, you want to keep spinning this shit, that's fine, David. But I, I'm going to tell you something. Shit getting deep in here. What the f I mean, I mean, no one's going to buy this shit. You're not a guy that's going to run out on his friend when he's getting shot at. That's not you. So the story is bull****. Now that this detective's figured out he's sitting in front of a DC, he's about to cast out what we call the channel a lure. You would have seen smart detectives do this technique before. An example would be the interrogation of Chris Watts, who we will be covering on an upcoming episode on the channel. 
they predominantly use this technique of casting out a lure and they do this because they know that this is a much better story than anything that the DC in his mind has come up with before. And that's what makes it attractive for the DC to grab hold of and get lured on in. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes when bad shit happens, people panic, okay? I got a theory. I think it might have been an accident. I think that maybe somebody was fing around and accidentally showed him. And they panicked. Didn't think anybody believed him. Was it an accident? Am I right? It's just hard. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard. It's the hardest thing you've ever done. Drop, drop all this shit and just let it out. You, Brad deserves it. Brad's family deserves it. Your wife deserves it. Your kids deserve it. Brad doesn't want me to leave my wife for a while. I know. It's been hard, you know, when you're with like, you know, our situation. You know, I love my wife and kids to death. You love Brad too? I did, I mean. Did sometimes you think about leaving your wife, Brad? Okay. I told him numerous times, man, I'm not going to leave my wife. I told him, I said, you know, things are going to have to start to stop. With each word, it's just glowing, I did this. I told him, I said, you know, things are going to have to start to stop. What happened? Yes, sir. Kid me, smack me around a couple times. If you end all of this now, then I'm, I'm done with you forever. Got real loud with me. No, kind of like up in my face. He had uh, one of those little derringers. What happened? It's okay. You went this far. Cross the line, man. It's time. Okay, Let it go. Tell me what happened next. That brings us to story number four. He had it in his hand. Just kind of like waving at me, you know what I mean? Okay. Telling me, you know, you're f***ed up, I'm tired of you, I can't believe you f***ed my emotions this long and just to call it quits. He kept waving at me, so I grabbed it. Okay. What happened after you grabbed it? I pushed him. Okay. Then what happened? I shot him. How do we know he's telling the truth? That in all of the stories he said before, this is the only time he didn't cry. Let's stand up. And here we have the next bad decision by this DC. So, I'm Brad, where am I? Which way am I facing? Over here. I'm facing over here, okay? So we're arguing. I mean, he actually kind of just come in and was like this, you know, slapping me around. Did you hear it all? Yes, sir. So he pulls his derringer from where? A hot tub there. He picked up the derringer and then he covered me and he, he just kept waving it. Waving it? Yes, yeah, so What am I saying? I'm Brad, what am I saying? You're a piece of sh**. You're a piece of sh**. I can't believe I can't you did believe this, you did this to me. You keep stringing me on like this. You keep stringing me along. Emotional. He's waving the gun. And then what happens? Do I fall down? No, sir. I stumble? I kind of stumble. Okay, then what? He come and he come at Come at you? And how do we know if this is the truth? Show me where. Show me where he shot me. Show me where. On top of the head. On top of the head? Yes, sir. And that's another reason why he's a DC. I want to ask you this. You shot him once, he's dead on the ground. Why'd you shoot him again? It was just, it just happened. Okay. It just happened. Be I honest. felt threatened, man. I really yeah. did. And how do we know that this is a lie? Because this is Brad. Okay, here's my problem, and my problems with rudimentary laws of physics, okay? He's coming at you, you, you shot him, okay, but the bullet's going this way. Yep, this DC is a bona fide genius. It was about this time that DC realized his stories weren't going anywhere, so he asked for a lawyer, which shut the interrogation down. And even after all of these screw-ups in DC's story, the DC crybaby still goes to court and pleads not guilty. So, how did it all end up? It's midday as an accused killer sees his first day in court. 
David Kinney went before a judge this morning just days after his arrest for the Sunday murder of Brad McGarry. News 9's Kate Davison joins us live now from Belmont County with the latest. Kate. This morning during an arraignment hearing, he's charged with one count of murder, a first degree felony. Mr. Kinney, your honor, is 30 years old. He's married to his wife. He's been married for nine years. We have three children together, ages 14, 13, and 10. On his record, uh, given his history, his ties to the community, bond uh, in the amount of $100,000. The judge overruled that request instead, setting Kenny's bond at $1 million. Oh, you'll love this. DC Crybaby actually made up a fifth story while he was in jail to give to the cops to try and get out. Eventually, his last story to us was that there was some type of altercation between the two of them Sunday afternoon that involved uh, an allegation of money being taken by him. The, in other words, the deceased was alleging that Mr. Kinney had taken money and there was some type of discussion, argument with regard to some uh, sexual relationship that these two guys had for what appears to be an extended period of time. According to Mr. Kinney, the deceased tapped him with that gun. He took that to mean that he was in fear for his life, grabbed the gun. His story to us was that he shot him once, he fell to the floor and he shot him again as he laid on the floor in the back of the head. The decision follows an emotional eight day jury trial that ended with a conviction of aggravated murder with a gun specification. News 9's Kate Davison has more. 31 year old David Kinney sat expressionless while the prosecution and defense made their final remarks in the case. The state of Ohio petitioned Judge Frank Frigiano for life in prison without the possibility for parole. Kinney's defense counsel argued that there is reason to believe Kinney could be a productive and lawful citizen later in life. The jury unanimously found him guilty of aggravated murder, a premeditated execution style murder, uh, shooting his supposed friend in the back of the head twice. Uh, and again, only Mr. Kenny knows why. If this man was able to do a assassin's job to someone he loved and his best friend, what could he do to his enemy? or someone who opposed him. Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court, although he made neither an admission nor did he offer an explanation. I would like to apologize to the Gary family for all the hurt and pain that I put you through and prevent for any of this to happen, and I wish it could all, I could take it all back. I know all the apologies in the world will never bring him back, but I want you to know I truly am sorry for it all. The defendant shall serve life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus three years beyond life in prison. New at five, the murder of 43-year-old Brad McGarry at his home last year troubled the Bel Air community. Later, David Kinney was found guilty of aggravated murder. Now the case will be shown across the country. News 9's Brittany Grego has more. The McGarry murder case will be featured on an upcoming episode of the... Dumb criminal. Yep, we've gone national. That brings us to the end of this episode of DC. We hope you found it informative. Our next video on the channel is made for our DC subbies. We're going to run a little bit of research here, find out about your opinion on the death penalty. So if you want to be part of that, make sure you subscribe. And to you, my DC subbies, we will see you next time. Stay safe, stay safe.